Hi everybody, it's Sam Kimmel with Kimmel Fabrication Studio here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, today we are doing a repair on, uh, this actually uh, part of a loader, so like a big heavy equipment piece. So this fiberglass has uh, got some extensive damage, uh, as well as there's a metal framework underneath. Uh, it has damage as well. Uh, but what we're going to go through today is showing you how to quickly, easily repair uh, some industrial fiberglass. So this isn't going to be like your perfect fiberglass that you know, you'd have on a Corvette or something like that. Uh, this is going to be kind of a quick, easier type fix, uh, something you could do at home. So follow along as we uh, do the repair on this. All right, I'm going to give you a quick walk around to show you some of the damages. Um, as you can see, there's there's cracks uh, all through the back of this, but there's also complete uh, breakage. So what we're going to do is um, a couple of these pieces are missing. So the piece that actually goes in here is missing. There's a couple pieces that they uh, brought to us. This big upper piece is... Uh, laying back here um, the cracks we're going to repair um, this piece going to go through it and repair all the cracks and then fit it back in and we will do all the repairs from the front side the side you're going to see we're going to do that first um, because this unit is very dirty and as you can see uh, the fiberglass is very dirty so um, we don't want to introduce any water into the front side of this since, uh, as you can see, it's very porous at this point. Um, we don't want to introduce any water into that, so we're actually going to do the repair on this side first. And then once that repair has cured, we're going to flip this thing over, scrub the whole inside out, and uh, we will go back through, clean up all the, the cracks from the inside and patch them from the inside, and then we will finish the outside at that point. Um, and then take this thing next door to the spray booth and get it painted with this frame You know previously being bent. Um, we want to bolt the whole thing back together and make sure that it actually uh, Is in the right spot before we start doing any repairs at all. All right, so we've got the main structure fitted back up to the frame um, You can see all the damage here. These pieces are not fitted where they go just yet and uh, So that's what we're about to show how to do fix the cracks fit these pieces back to where they go all of the structure where it still had good uh holes you know that weren't cracked out from the accident um, we've put screws in to fasten these back in normally those are a rivet uh, but we put screws in so we can temporarily fasten it into place where it goes and then uh and then that gives us you know obviously the the main shape so all we have to do is rebuild this so what we're going to do is we're going to use these uh piece of wood they're just a uh, cut down piece of a pallet and we'll actually fit these behind all the cracked structures where it's flat, drill holes, and screw these on from the back side. And that should get us nice, straight, sturdy structure that then we can grind out and get cleaned up for replacement of fiberglass. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna start with this really simple crack here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is hold this board on the back side. Imagine where it is. Hold it at the bottom. I'm gonna drill the holes on the top so I don't drill any holes through my hands and uh, then I'll, I'll get the bottom ones drilled once I get the top screws put in. So right now I'm gonna feel where the crack is from this side, feel where my board is. And I can feel it hit that wood on the back side. So it's good. All right, so now without moving, I'm gonna grab a drywall screw. Which these work really good to do fab work like this. We'll just tighten that down a little bit. Now I can remove my hand because it should be still in the right spot. Shouldn't have moved too much. And there we go. And you can see how that's drawn that pretty nicely together. Um, I probably wouldn't even have to put any more screws in, but since I've got that board all the way it's, it's landing somewhere in here. I'm gonna go ahead and screw that down too, and that'll give us a really nice area that we can repair. Then we'll pull these screws out and fill the holes, and you'll never even know it was done. There we go, nice flat. You know, for as, as much as can be expected, that's pretty nice and flat. Now we can grind this out and do a repair on that pretty much entire crack. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back through all of these spots. We've got different size boards cut. Um, some of them we're going to put sideways like this since that has a radius. You know, the board sitting flat like this, obviously, we'll, we'll deflect that in a way we don't want. So we'll put those boards sideways and we'll come back through and we'll just affix this whole thing back together 
except for the missing pieces. And then we'll show you how we're gonna do the missing parts. So what we're gonna do now is, uh, we still need to make this corner, but first we're gonna clean up all the old gel coat, um, get this fiberglass prepped to accept new glass and uh, you know, get all of the lines that are, you know, that are broken here. We'll get those ground out um, and everything cleaned up and ready to put fiberglass in it. The grease and dirt on this was pretty substantial, so I cleaned everything with acetone first. All right, all cleaned up, used acetone, cleaned all the grease and dirt and everything else off of it that was there. And now we're ready to bust out a grinder and get filthy. Uh, so. Fiberglass sucks, so wear your protective uh, gear, guys. To clean up areas like this, we prefer a 90 degree angle grinder with a two inch sanding disc. I typically use a 40 grit or 80 grit disc when I'm doing this type of work. Feathering the edge is also very important as we want plenty of room for the fiberglass to adhere. Even though this will be backed up on the backside with more fiberglass, I like to make sure there's plenty of surface and contact area through the layers of fiberglass. To kind of veed this out, that'll give us plenty of room to uh, get new fiberglass in here and uh, still be able to shave it back. We still have the spots that we need to fill. Gonna make this piece out of cardboard now. See we've cleaned up all these different spots that need filled. And I know you're probably thinking we should have just replaced the whole thing. These are very, very expensive parts. Um, we're in the United States. This piece is made in Germany and these are extremely expensive and they are uh, very expensive to ship as well. We need something to hold the basic shape. So I'm using cardboard here and a hot glue gun and then shaping it to the general shape. We can lay fiberglass over this and then remove the cardboard from the back side later. This makes it really easy to get a shape formed up in just a matter of minutes and the cardboard's removed so it doesn't add anything or take anything away from the structure. Now that we've got the big hole patched up, it's time to move on to the smaller one. I'm gonna cut a piece of cardboard just a little bit bigger than the size of the hole, and then I'm gonna slip it through and hold it with a screw while it's glued in place. So here you can see I put a screw in the cardboard and slip it through at an angle. Then I'll apply glue and just hold onto the screw and put tension against the fiberglass on the inside while I glue it in place. And this works well when you're working alone. All right, so as you can see, we've did a rough shape uh, with the cardboard here. I'm gonna go uh, get some fiberglass mat tore up and come back in here and we'll get resin and fiberglass mat and we'll get this rough shape uh, as well as all of the uh, the cracked portions filled for tonight. I'm gonna let that sit overnight and then tomorrow morning we're gonna come in and scrub the whole inside of this unit, take all the screws out, everything that we've used to hold it together for the time being and then uh, get it nice and clean, and then we're gonna do a patch from the inside. Once the inside patch is done, then we're gonna come finish and smooth out the whole outside. For this type of work, I like to use an unwaxed polyester laminating resin. And the reason that it's red is we use a MEKP that is the hardener, and it has a vanishing red dye in it. And it's kind of a visual cue to know how much hardener you've put into your resin, but also when it cures out, it turns clear. It works as a visual indicator to show you that the part's either cured or not. I also like to brush resin into any of the crevices and cracks before I lay any fiberglass mat over the top. And this just helps the fabric stick better and it also wets out the previous uh, old fiberglass area where we've ground. Okay, so here we are day two. We have went through uh, all these screws, we just took a little angle grinder and knocked the resin off that was over the top of the screws and then we removed the screws. As you can see, we just backed them out. Um, that has gotten rid of all the screws that are on the surface. Uh, fiberglass actually doesn't look too terrible. And then we'll come around to this side. Let me get a light on. And you can see where there's some cracks inside of here. Kind of hard to see. Um, but we're going to come in and grind those out with the 90 degree grinder, a uh, little angle grinder with a two inch uh, grinding wheel. There are real faint ones. We're going to go ahead and clean those up too and then just put a little like uh, probably one inch strip of fiberglass uh, to cover the back side of these and that'll strengthen it from both sides. So once we get that done, then we'll come back through and we'll actually grind all this smooth and it'll leave, you know, a nice structural fiberglass bond on both sides of the panel. Typically, we'd have a vacuum hose here to collect a lot of this dust that's flying around. Um, but this day, we were having trouble with the vacuum and it didn't get used, uh, so we just kind of had to deal with it. A 
we've got all of the interior uh, cracked areas um, ground down with that 90 degree grinder. Everything is surfaced, so we've got a good, uh, nice clean surface where we're going to adhere the patch panels. So I want to make a little note uh, on something that I like to do. If I'm repairing something interior like this uh, that doesn't have to be blended into everything else, um, you know, this isn't going to get any post finishing. So once I put the fiberglass on here, this for reinforcement, we won't do anything further to this. Um, I'm going to cut, you know, I just cut a bunch of strips like this. And the reason I did that is because it's super easy. We can, you know, tear these and we obviously got, you know, pretty quick and easy repair. Um, normally I would tear these into pieces and that's if I'm trying to blend this edge. Cause as you can see, you know, this edge would blend much easier than, you know, something like that would. So tearing it helps you blend the edges a lot better. If you're not worried about it, as we're not in this situation, I just cut it into strips to make it a little bit easier instead of having to tear all the pieces. And I'm gonna put a little bit on here too, just to wet this out prior to, to doing the uh, fiberglass work. I'll actually get some down in all the grooves and make sure that our fiberglass sticks well. So just like yesterday, when we started this project, pre-wet all the pieces. Now you can see these have started to, they're, they're almost clear now. I mean, you can, you can see my gloves through them. That's when you know they're ready to stick up there. All right, so now I'm just gonna use a bunch of the pre-cut pieces and get all of this fiberglass work done on the backside. Really not too bad when you're working over your head. It's a lot easier to wet out the material on a piece of cardboard and then stick it up there. Putting it up there dry and then trying to get enough resin on it, it just ends up dripping all over. So it's really better to wet it out before you stick it up there. I'm gonna be shooting a new industrial paint on the outside of this, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the decals with this heat gun. So we've removed all the decals. We are ready to start grinding the fiberglass. We're gonna cut back everything that's covering uh, any of the yellow. That way it just leaves the filled portions. And then uh, we will get that straightened out and body worked and this thing will be primered and painted. So here we are, looks pretty good. No decals and we're ready to rock and roll on the grinding. After grinding the fiberglass smooth, we just use a lightweight body filler and skim coat everything to smooth it out. Here's a quick walk around. You can see that we have corrected all the uh, misshapen broken parts and it is getting ready now to go into the paint booth which is actually next door and we will get this thing shot in a uh, heavy build fill primer and then we'll bring it back here get a block sanded out and after that it should be uh, ready to paint well here it is the finished piece and uh, it turned out pretty good we just got it back from the paint booth um, as we said before, you know, we didn't make this thing absolutely perfect as far as the body work goes um, Since it's a piece of heavy equipment, you know, all the fiberglass work has been finished inside and outside uh, It's painted back to its original color and uh, they're gonna get this reinstalled and back on their equipment so All right, everybody that's gonna conclude our video for the fiberglass repair on this loader hood If you enjoyed the video, please go give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions or comments leave those below don't forget to subscribe. We are gonna be making a ton of videos. So uh, as you can see, we work on a lot of different things. We're gonna do tips and tricks and all sorts of things for you guys to watch. So don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.